flying United Airlines for the first time or you've flown them a lot, these five tips are gonna help you today fly like a pro. All that anxiety and worry is gonna go away after this video. Hang with me for great bonus tips and my number one tip. Let's get into it. Tip number one. Okay, the first tip is a good one. It's a really, really a common question I get. How to buy my tickets, how to check in, and how do I get my seats, and what kind of seats are there, and what is available with each seat, and all that kind of good stuff. So let's just break it down for you right here, okay? What I tell people to do is go to Google. Google is the easiest way to, to look for flights. You can put in your city, where you wanna go, the dates, all that stuff, and it'll tell you most airlines and their prices. Of course, Southwest is not included in that. They're special. Watch my video on them. I've got a video on all of their stuff if you're flying Southwest. But for United, this is the great tool that I love to use and I recommend and I personally use because it has this thing called the flight tracker. So once you find a couple of flights and dates you're looking for, you can just toggle that flight tracker on and it will email you when it goes up and down and you can get it get a great deal that way because as soon as they tell you there's a great deal, you can just take that deal and buy it and you've, you're good to go. You can also use Expedia, Travelocity, all those, but never ever, listen to me, come back to me, never buy directly from any of these, from Google, from Expedia, from Travelocity, from Priceline, for any of those. And I'm gonna tell you why, but go, once you get a, once you get a good price and you've found a good price through Hopper, Google Flights, any of those that give you a good price, Go directly to the airline and look up your flight because most likely you will find the same price or cheaper. And you want to book directly with the airline for these reasons because if anything goes wrong, you get a delay, you get a cancellation, you get abandoned or stranded, they can't help you really. You have to go back to Expedia, back to Google, back to Travelocity or whoever and you have to deal with them. And a lot of times there's a lot of restrictions on those tickets. They're, they're not very helpful and it's just not, I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of people book and they're fine, but it's a risk. So for me, I always book directly with the airline because normally I get it to the same price or cheaper. I have that security to go right to them and they can handle me there at the gate or in their customer service and it just makes things easier if there are issues. And trust me, these days, especially, there are issues. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's get into the seats. United has three seat types, basic economy, economy plus, and first class. For domestic, I'm not talking about international flights on this video. I will get into that later, but if you're watching this and you're gonna fly them international, then you're gonna look for Polaris. That's the international first class. It's got the lay flats and everything and the pods. But this video is just for USA domestic, so I don't wanna get you confused if you're watching this and you're taking an international flight. So let's get back to the video. The basic economy, United is special in this situation. Most airlines are not doing this anymore. They were all doing it for a while, the big ones. But basic economy, you get no carry-on and you do not get to select your seat. You get one personal item like a backpack or something. And it's just it's just for those people that are maybe taking a really quick trip. They don't care where they sit. They don't need a lot with them. And it's great, you know, it's great for you. Economy Plus, you get a little extra legroom. You get to select your seat and you get to bring a carry-on. And it also pretty much guarantees you a space, not always, but a space above to put your carry-on above you. Now, again, I know there's a lot of international people that watch this because they're looking for tips uh, and we're bringing a lot of long haul videos to this channel. Um, we just flew Anna, Anna and we're gonna fly Delta One and United Polaris and I'm gonna have videos here. But right now this is just domestic. So this is not premium economy, which is a whole different thing than premium plus. I just wanna clarify there. This, this does include Mexico and Canada. So these airlines like United Airlines will fly a domestic plane to these destinations and they will have the same product on them. You won't have lay flats to go to Cancun or go up to Vancouver. First class is pretty great. I've flown them several times, United, um, from Houston to Seattle, like long haul, you know, six hour flights. And they're really great. You get a nice big seat, a lot of space in front of you. You get a nice armrest. You get plenty of drinks. You, water is delivered to you um, right when you get on the plane and you get drinks right away throughout the, throughout the flight. And then you get uh, snacks and stuff provided to you. A meal, if it's that kind of flight, if you're in the right, time frame of dinner, lunch, or breakfast. It also gives you uh, access to charging ports and usually a screen 
but if you don't have a screen, you'll have a place to put your phone. Or if you listen to Zacchaeus, I'll have tech tips here for ways to be prepared if they have nothing so you don't get stuck just flying like, who when are we gonna get there? Of course, with first class, you get a carry-on. And I'll talk about luggage in another tip, but you do get a carry-on, so and you'll get you'll get space reserved for you above your seat for that carry-on. Just again for my international friends out there that are watching this video, I am coming out with the video, but this would be a Polaris, which would be more like a bigger pod, a lay flat. There's meals served. There's a lot of more stuff served with your thing. So just be sure to subscribe to the video wherever it is down here and click that little bell. You'll get notified when I put those videos up. I got long haul flights coming for you guys. But for most airlines, you get a 24 hour check-in. That means if your flight is on Thursday at 12 p.m., then you'll check in at Wednesday at 12 p.m. If you book your tickets all together, like four of you guys, your wife, husband, two kids or whatever, then when you check in, you will have the option to check everyone in and they're checked all the way through. So you don't have to worry about getting to a layover and checking in again. You're checked all the way through. And if you check luggage, which I'll get into the next tip, it'll be checked all the way through as well. So let's get into tip number two. It's luggage. It's luggage. This is, I get this question a lot. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff here for United Airlines on luggage. Let's get into the biggest question I get is a weight limit. What can I take? What is the deal? What's the situation? How big can it be? For me, I usually go to the counter when I'm checking luggage. And I, I know a lot of airlines are doing the kiosk now or you check in at the curb. I just prefer to go to the counter, make sure I'm good, make sure everything's solid. They tell me where to go, that if there's delays or anything, I just, just feel better talking to a person. It's usually faster too than a kiosk. But this is going away. I'm seeing a trend toward airlines getting rid of people and going to like self checkout at a kiosk automated system where you have to punch in all your information or scan your code on your phone and then it does all the stuff, verifies you, prints out your stuff, you self tag your luggage and then take it up and just drop it off and they run it through security and head it to the plane. They're claiming it's healthy, touchless, you know, stuff like that. For a checked luggage, the requirements are 62 inches or 157 centimeters, but don't get worried about this, okay? If you're 63 inches or you're 160 centimeters, don't, don't fret about it. It's gonna be okay. They don't pull out a ruler and be like, nah, 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 shame, shame, shame. No, it's, it's fine. Like, now if you bring in like a big old boulder, you know, that's like, you know, 20 feet high or something, they're gonna say something, but don't fret. This is not a big deal. Just take it in there and, and just don't say anything. Don't be like, oh, mine's 167 centimeters. Can I get some help on that? No, just walk up, put your thing in, say, I need to check my bags and just move along. With United, you do want to know that only first class gets free check luggage. Everyone else has to pay. It's for domestic flights. Now, international's different. Again, let me tell you, international's different. This is a domestic USA video. But for domestic flyers that are flying like to Atlanta to Orlando or Seattle to Houston, something like that, and you check luggage, it's $30 for the first bag and it has to be 50 pounds or less or it's gonna be charged, uh, there's gonna be an upcharge. The second bag is $40, so you're at 70 for two. And the, any bag after that, the third, fourth, fifth, is $150 each. Yes, you heard me right. They do not want you checking luggage, okay? If you're over 50 pounds, they will charge you $100 to $200 per bag extra. Now, that's really crazy. So they, they are, do not want you to be over 50 pounds. So what we do is we get a, a scaler. They're really cheap on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. And we just weigh our bags at home to just make sure because we've been there when it's been over and you have to take it open and take stuff with you because you don't want to pay $100, $200 for a bag on top of the fee. That puts you at $130 or $230 or something like that, depending on where you're going and the destination. Okay, another big question I get is carry-on. I get a lot of questions about, oh my goodness, my carry-on is too large or it's one inch too bigger than they say it should be. Okay, so let's just get into it. Their website says, the limit size limit is nine inches by 14 inches by 22 inches or 22 centimeters by 35 centimeters by 56 centimeters. That's a guideline. 
Now you can't bring a big check luggage or some huge thing or they're going to say something. But my away travel is TSA approved and it is 9.6 inches, 14.7 inches and 22.7 inches or 24 centimeters by 37 centimeters by 57.7 centimeters. Just to give you guys an example, I've never ever had one time that it's been an issue. In fact, I had one lady in JFK and JFK is one of the worst airports in the world with American Airlines. And she called me out and she's like, your bag's too big. And I put it in the thing. She's like, okay, it just looks too big. I'm telling you, no issues. I mean, you are good to go there. And I, if you buy from any major luggage outlet, like Samsonite or Away Travel, or you go to any, any major brand, they, they know the rules. They're going to make it where it's okay to take it. I've never had a problem putting my way bag up above me in any plane I've been in. I've been in small little Learjets. I've been in big, huge uh, international flights. You know, it's not a problem. So don't worry about it. Don't fret about it. And do not walk up to that gate agent and say, I think my bag might be too big. Could you check it for me? Because you will get slammed. You do not want to draw attention to yourself. This is about being confident, smooth, and in control. Okay? Okay, you're going to thank me later for that one. Again, I know I already stated this in tip number one, but I just want to remind you guys, this is one of the few airlines where their basic economy ticket, you do not get to take a carry-on. They will charge you. They will charge you a lot because they don't let you upgrade or anything from to a carry-on. You either you get to upgrade economy plus if you want to take a carry-on. Again, I just want to say this. I know I keep saying this, but this is not international. This is domestic USA America. International flights are different. Everybody gets a carry on. Everybody gets check luggage, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So don't get me wrong here. And you also with, um, basic economy, you only get one personal item. So it's a backpack. You can't take a backpack and a purse or a backpack and like a, a, a bag or something. They will ding you. The whole point of this is to save money by cutting back on all the things that people bring on because most of the time there's short space above there's they they don't want to have you have too much stuff around your feet all that kind of stuff and you chose that you know you chose that fair so you've got to like live by those rules and they're pretty strict on them most of the time now i've flown united many 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 times i actually really like united uh, they're one of my favorite airlines i flew them for a year twice a week they are hubbed out of Houston and Chicago. They're very clean planes. The staff has always been really good to me. I've had issues, don't get me wrong. I've had huge delays. I've sat on the tarmac for four hours. I got in at like 1 a.m. after um, like a seven hour delay in, in Dallas. But you know, things like that are gonna happen. And they, they were really good. I mean, they just really handled it really well, I thought. And I just really enjoy flying them. Tip number three, this is a big one. Tip number three is a huge one that a lot of people don't know. They even travel a lot. And so I put this in all my travel videos because I learned this the hard way. Snacks, drinks, and entertainment. Okay, let's break it down. So TSA security does not let you bring water bottles. You cannot bring a big water bottle like this. They will confiscate it. They'll take it from you. It's just you can't bring Cokes. You can't bring, you know, juices. You can't bring any kind of liquids like that. The only thing you can bring through TSA is sealed snacks. So you can even cook cookies at home or bring chips from home, but they have to be in a sealed bag that in your, in your suitcase, they can't be free and just joshing around. And then you can bring that through. So you need to always, oh, I know, I know you're going to say, well, I bought a ticket and they're going to serve me a drink and a snack. That's what comes with my plane ticket, right? Wrong. What happens if they can't get up? There's turbulence. What happens if there's a delay for four hours on the tarmac and they're not allowed to get up and serve you drinks? There is a lot of things that can happen once that door shuts, once you're on that plane that are out of your control. So the whole goal of my tips here from one to 25, you know, one to five. Okay. <laughs> stay with me. Stay with me. Come back to me. Come back to me. <laughs> there's only five tips. So is to control your environment. You want to control what you can control. And one of the things you can control is your drinks, snacks, and entertainment. So 
go to the store after you get through security and buy a bottle of water, buy a coat, buy both, buy a juice. If you if your budget doesn't allow that, then bring a nice Yeti bottle or some kind of bottle that, that's empty. It has to be empty through security. But once you get through security, you can fill it up at a water fountain. I even buy cold water at the store and fill it up in my Yeti, especially on long flights, because this thing keeps the water cold and I like to drink cold water. So that you need to, you want to do that. If you're on a rush and you're like, I'm late, I can't do it. What am I going to do? There's vending machines. Tap it with your Apple Pay. Tap it with your Google Pay. Swipe it with your card. Something. Get a drink. You. It's. It takes seconds to get a drink. You want to have that drink. I'm telling you, especially if you're running. I've run through the airport, got on a plane, been so thirsty, and then been told there's maintenance delays. They don't serve you drinks. You can ping them all you want they, they can't get the drinks out and then you get up in the air it takes a while to get up in the air and then they have to level off and then they have to serve people and if you're in the middle or something you know they go row by row by row. it takes forever i've seen them get almost to me and have to stop because of turbulence or something like we suspended the the beverage and snack uh service so this is something I'm telling you, I'll find the hard way. If you're not listening to me, you're gonna be in trouble. I promise you it will happen. So get you a drink. I usually get a drink and a Coke, just something something like Sprite, ginger ale, Dr. Pepper or something. But whatever you get like, just get something and get something salty, something sweet. Because you don't know if they're gonna serve you anything. What if you get hungry? What if you're stuck for four hours and you you don't you're not hungry right now, but you might get hungry. You wanna be in control. So t comment below when this happens to you and thank me for this tip because you're going to be thanking me when you're sitting on that plane, you're going to be like, you're looking at everybody else like they're thirsty and hungry and you'll be like, I'm good to go. Okay, let's talk about entertainment. This is the same situation. You're like, they had, they give me free TV. They give me free movies. They give me free live TV. They give me free podcasts. They give me free music, right? No big deal. What if the Wi-Fi is down? What if the entertainment system's down? That's happened to me happened to me okay so what you want to do is pull up your hulu pull up your netflix pull up your disney plus pull up your peacock whatever pull up max whatever you use hulu is a little touchy on what you can download but find your stuff and download it you can it's called downloading offline onto your device on your ipad onto your phone whatever you use i usually do both on long trips just in case but download that stuff, download your music, Spotify, Apple Music, all of them give you an option to take your music offline, which means it downloads to your device and doesn't need an inter internet connection or Wi-Fi to run. And so get some music on there, get some podcasts on there. If you like to listen to audiobooks like me, go to Audible, get your Audible books. I love Audible. I always have two or three downloaded on my device, so I'm always covered if I just wanna to listen to a book. Whether it's fiction or a you know, help, self-help book or business book, whatever it might be. Once you get that, then you're solid, right? Because if it goes down, if you're stuck for a long time, a lot of times on the tarmac, the Wi-Fi and entertainment system won't work until you're up in the air. So you can just sit there and watch your stuff, listen to your stuff, be chill, be in control. You hear me? You feel me? One little tip I want to give you on TSA security. Um, one thing I told you that didn't, you couldn't bring drinks or anything, right? But there is one liquid you can bring. And I just get this question a lot. I don't know why, cause I'm a guy, but I guess it's a big thing. Like it's breast milk. A lot of women with small children that they're breastfeeding need to bring their breast milk with them, you know, so they can feed their kids when they're traveling. So one thing that TSA will allow is breast milk. Now, the minute you get there, when they ask for your ID and they scan your boarding pass on your phone or whatever, tell them right then that you have breast milk. Most people freeze it from what I understand from my friends. They freeze it. They tell TSA security it travels better frozen and it gets through security easier. Now they will give you they will have to check it out, you know, so don't be offended by that. Like it's, it's something that not, doesn't happen all the time. So just let them do their thing and they'll let you, let you through with it. So I just wanted to give you that tip. I'm not a mom, of course, <laughs> and I'm never going to be because I'm a man. And so I just wanted to let you guys know that 
that is something for all you mothers out there. And maybe you're a dad watching, so you know you can tell your wife that uh, you can bring the breast milk with you so your kids can be fed and so you have something for your trip and stuff. Because I know that's it's already hard to bring kids and stuff with you. So I hope this helps you out. Another thing that you want to do is you need tech to do all that, right? You need to know what kind of tech to take. You don't need a ton of tech always. Some of you have really shocked me on what you take. But here's number four. Tip number four is all about tech. One of my biggest things is noise canceling headphones. I use Bose Quiet Comforts 35s. A friend begged me to buy these when I took my first international trip five years ago to Italy. And I was like, I can't afford that kind of money on headphones. He's like, look, he's like, look, Zacchaeus, just buy them and you can take them back if you don't like them when you get back from your trip. But just take them with you. And I have had these since then i mean they're over five years old and they are absolutely crazy amazing the noise canceling headphone part of it is by far worth it right i mean it cancels out the, all that plain noise well most of it screaming babies dogs barking people talking too loud when you're just trying to chill or at night when you're sleeping and then of course it's bose right they sound amazing and then the battery lasts forever. I have left these sitting for almost six months before another trip. And when I turn them on, it still says battery 99% or something like that. It's crazy. I've used these for hours and hours and hours on long haul flights. No issues. I've slept in them. The other thing I love is most headphones, especially I'm a bigger guy. I run hot. They make my ear, ears hot, but these don't. They actually are so comfortable and they almost like cool you. And the padding up here is so comfortable. It doesn't get my head hot. And it's just, I, I, I take them on every flight, even small domestic flights. I just take them with me because you just never know. You can also get AirPod Maxes or AirPod Pros. Those do cancellations. Sony's got some uh, cancellations that I've heard are really good, noise cancellations. But I just want to tell you, you need to get something like this, especially on a long flight. Like if you're going from Seattle to Houston or Seattle to New York or New York to LA or something like that, long flights over three hours, they're definitely a must because they're wireless Bluetooth. You can watch your TV. You can connect to your stuff. It's just super, super simple and it makes things so much easier. Now, I also use the um, fly flap you can see it right here in the background it's just this cheap little thing that bends and they'll go over the seat over the tray thing i use it a ton to hold my phone because i get tired of like looking down at it or holding it up it hurts my neck and that way i can set it in front of me on the on the seat and uh, in front of me and just put my bows on and just like you know eat my drink drink my water you know all that kind of stuff it makes it so nice to be in control of what you're doing especially when you're stuck on the tarmac or something another thing in the tech world that i always fly with is called the airfly pro there's a white version you can check out my video i just did a video on it i'll put the link down below and it'll be at the end of this video um, i always fly with that um, because a lot of united flights still have the screens especially in first class so I can just plug this in to the headphone jack in the screen and it will wirelessly transmit to my Bose headphones. It just sends, sends the audio to them. That way I don't have to have a wire running across and dangling and all that kind of stuff. It just makes it so much simpler. So I highly recommend that, especially for you international people that are always watching my videos. They're taking long haul flights. They always have screens and they always have a headphone jack and you want to watch my videos on those because I've got a lot of tech tips for you on that stuff. But this again is United Domestic USA, okay? <laughs> so the last tech tip I'll tell you about is the battery pack. Now, a lot of planes have charging ports, right? Most of the new planes that you fly on today have some form of charging ports, but a lot of times I've gotten on there and there hasn't been a charging port or it's been broken. So I always take a battery pack. I use this little one that clips onto the end of my phone. It goes right on the end of my phone and it just sits there and charges my phone. And I also have my away charger that comes with my away travel bag, which they just did away with on their new upgrades. I don't know why I'm so disappointed because me, we, we use that so many times all the time when we're traveling. It pops out of your bag. 
You plug your phone in. I'm walking down the air, the, in the airports, charging my phone. I just use it so many times. It's so inner, such a great thing. I can't believe they got rid of it, but they still carry the original. If you want to go on their website and buy it with the battery pack, I think the original is better anyways from looking at it, but don't tell anybody. Anyways, a battery pack will save your life, especially if you're on a long flight, you're burning up watching TV or listening to music. If you bought the Wi-Fi package and you're texting and surfing the internet, your battery's gonna go, right? And you need a way to recharge it. What if the port doesn't work? What if there is no port? So always bring some kind of battery pack with me so I'm in control, right? Because once that, once you're in that tube flying through the air, you're at the mercy of whatever is there unless you control your own destination, your own world, your own little bubble there, as much as you can. I have a ton of travel gear listed on my Amazon list. I'll put a link down below. You can go there and look at all the stuff I use and I travel with both domestically and internationally. Um, hope that it helps you. Um, I do make a little bit of money. It's an affiliate link. So I appreciate you guys using those links when you can. Um, it helps fund the channel and fund content like this. How would you see my beautiful face? if you don't keep the channel going, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, the last thing here, I'm just gonna give you this on tech here, is you gotta be able to track your luggage, whether it's your carry-on or your check luggage, your backpack. I even have a tracker in my Bose thing. I ha have it in everything that I use. And I use now, I used to use Tile, but now I use Apple AirTags. And the reason why is because there's billions of phones now all over the world, if I lose something, it creates an instant network to go to find my stuff. And it, I've lost, I lost a phone in Dubai in an Uber and I found it and got it back because of find my app. So I use air tags in my, for several reasons. In my check luggage, I always know that it's on the plane with me. I pull up my app. I say find my stuff and it says, mm, your check luggage is near you. That means it's on the plane with me. It's not getting lost. It's traveling with me. And if it does get lost, I can find it, right? So, and for that one, I put it inside for the air, for the carry on, the away travel, I use a leather strip on it. And for my backpack, I use a little loop. And so there's different things to hold them and handle them and connect them to. You don't want to hang it out on your check luggage because it gets beat up and tossed and someone could take it off. But if it's inside, it's hard to find, hard to get to, harder to know it's there. You can find your luggage and get it back. So that's a, a huge tip. I'll put a link, all the links down below to this. And um, a four pack is like 80 something dollars. It's very cheap and they last a long time. You can replace the batteries on them every year is what I do. Normally they last about a year, a little over a year. And you will thank me later for that kind of stuff. I also use tiles, but they've gotten more expensive and their their network is less and their, their range, you know, like if I'm far away from it, it doesn't pick up as, as good as AirTags do. Okay, you still with me? <laughs> Tip number five. Tip number five is all about boarding and security. I'm just gonna do a little announcement here, okay? That just needs to be said these days. Be kind, be polite, have etiquette. Think about people around you. Think about the things that you should know when you're getting on the plane and off the plane. When you get on the plane, you should find your seat you should get the stuff up and, 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 and get out of the way. If you need something out of your bag or something, wait till people get on the plane. Then you can get up and you can get all your stuff out. But if you don't have it ready to drop in your seat, like I have all my stuff ready to just pull out and drop in my seat and put up because I've just got it down pat. But I've seen people hold up a whole boarding because they're like, oh, you want some gum? Okay, I'll get you some gum. You want, no, put your bags up and put it in your seat. Get out of the way and let people board the plane. It's good for you because they're gonna board faster and get you out of there faster. And the, the window is short on getting you out before there's an issue, right? You just wanna get on there and get out. So there's, and then the next thing is when you get off the plane, you exit row by row. The front row goes, all the front row goes. The second row, all the second row goes. The third row, and it goes back like that. These people that go running to the front or just get up and run up and try to get as close to the front, that's rude. There's no etiquette, there's no manners. It's not proper, and it just comes off as like a little trashy, you know? You don't wanna be that, you wanna be classy. Flying is a thing that you're trapped in a tube with a bunch of people and we need to be etiquette. 
We need to have care, concern. Be polite to your flight attendants. Be polite, be polite to your gate agents. If there's an issue, a cancellation, a delay, anything, you're calling customer service or you're dealing with the gate agent or the counter agent, I'm telling you, you'll get a lot further if you're nice to them. It's not their fault. And if you're mean to them and rude to them, all it does is create a human nature response that they don't want to help you. They want to make your life harder. They, they don't want to go that extra mile for you. So I'm just telling you, this situation on tip number five of boarding is really about waiting your turn, getting on quickly, considering others, and being thoughtful. And never put your seatbelt on unless you're in the window seat. Wait till everybody gets on in your row, then you can put your seatbelt on. Otherwise, you're going to take it off, get up, take it off, get up. Like, Just be, be prepared to be courteous. Be prepared to have etiquette and manners. And I'm telling you, the flight will go so much better if you do. If you're just calm and you're like, I'm ready for anything that comes. I'm ready for those delays. I'm ready for those cancellations. I'm ready for those rude passengers because I'm not going to stoop to their level. I'm not going to be at that level, right? We're going to rise above and be higher here at the Zacchaeus Nation. If you're part of the Zacchaeus Nation, you've hit that subscribe button. We're going to be part of Zacchaeus Travel Nation that does things the right way. And that's what my goal and mission is. For years and years and years I flew and there was no issues like this. Now, I get all kinds of wacko people. I mean, people that go running to the front of the plane. I've had so many people play their music, their movies out loud, like we all wanna watch it or something. I've had people let their kids play games and video games and watch TV and stuff out loud. They're, they're cartoons that run over and over again until the stewardess comes along. Now stewardess had to make, I'm sorry, flight attendants have to make announcements over the air all the time. Like, please use headphones. Like that was never a thing until recently. Like what happened? Why are we not mature adults that can get on a plane and care about our fellow men and our fellow women and our fellow kids? You know, we got to be an example to them and show them how we act in public and how we treat people. We're all tired. We're all trying to get somewhere. We're all frustrated by the delays. We're all hungry or thirsty or whatever. It doesn't make you special. It, you need to have emotional maturity to suck it up, buttercup, and do the right thing. That's my little TSA announcement. <laughs> okay, let's get on to boarding the stuff you really want to know about, okay? So there's six groups. There are really five, but they say there's six groups because there's pre-boarding, which is military, handicapped people, people with small children that need to get on and take time to situate. One through five are their main groups that you're going to fall into, depending on what kind of ticket you bought, when you checked in, how often you fly with them. There's a lot of things that come into that. First class passengers will always be number one and they get to board first and then it kind of goes down the line based on your status, based on the ticket price, the class, all that kind of thing. And you'll board in that order. They'll call group number one, boarding, group number two, boarding, group number three. And what you'll see it on your ticket or on your phone in your boarding pass, you'll see your group number. And when they call your group number, it's time to go. There's no uh, order if groups, Three is just, you know, you just get in line and board on the plane. If you are in group four and five, maybe even three, you are you are starting to get at risk of not having space for your carry-on. This is a pretty common thing across all airlines, every airline. I've, I've dealt with it many times. And usually the gate will start announcing like, hey, we're, we're fully booked. Does somebody want to volunteer to gate check their carry-on? And if you're in four or five, you can risk it. I've risked it before because I just don't like checking my bag. I want to take a risk and see if I can get it up there. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But just be prepared for that mentally so you don't freak out or flip out or get mad or all heated up because it's just the way things are. If you want to go up to a higher group member, you got to fly more, you got to buy a first class ticket or something like that. I've been there, we've all been there. It's not something that's just, you know, they're picking on you or anything. So just be be prepared if that happens. Now there's two gate checks, two types of gate checks. A lot of times they'll just put a, like a blue tag on there and they take the, you leave it at the door as you go into the plane. And when you get off the plane, you'll pick up your check bag right there at the door of the plane. 
So that's a really nice one. I still don't like losing my access to my stuff and them, you know, throwing my suitcase around, but it's better. The second type is they check it all the way through and you have to pick it up in baggage claims down at the baggage level and that's takes longer it's it's you know it's the whole reason i don't check bags a lot except on big flights um long you know long trips and stuff so i just wanted you guys to know about that so you're prepared and you're ready for it always feel free to nicely ask them they'll tell you oh yeah this is a gate check where you just pick it up when you get off or no this is checked all the way through you can even say is there any way i could you know keep it i've got some stuff in here that i don't want to lose you know if you're nice they might work with you i can't promise you anything sometimes there's just no more room and they don't have a way to gate check to the you know to the door they have to gate check it all the way through then you know you just have to that's that's the lot you've been dealt and you have to live with it and trust me i've been there now again for my international friends that seem to watch my videos because i get a lot of international questions in the comments this is not, does not apply for you. If you're on an international flight from like Atlanta to France or, you know, JFK to, you know, Dubai or something, you will have plenty of room above, even in economy. Everyone takes their carry-ons on because they know it's a long flight. You need your stuff. There's plenty of room. Those planes are huge. Okay, if you're still with me, thank you so much. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching this video. Here is the bonus. Are you ready for the bonus? This is the one just for those people that are sticking with me to the end, which I love you guys for. Asking for upgrades or getting upgrades in your app. Okay, so a lot of times when you go to check in, United will pop up an offer for you to upgrade to Economy Plus if you're in Economy or to First Class. I've gotten some really good deals to jump from Economy Plus to First Class and I take them. I mean, sometimes it's like $300 round trip or $200 one way or whatever it might be. If it makes sense to you and to your budget, it's a great thing. Now you can always walk up to the counter or the gate and ask them if there's any upgrades available. Sometimes the flight is not full or they, their first class is like only half full or something. They might offer you a great deal, but it's always worth asking. You never know if they're overbooked to an economy and they're looking for that nice person to bump to first class. It's happened to a lot of people I know and to me, so just be nice. And if they say no, don't get them mad, don't get offended. You took your shot, you took your chance. One time I asked three times, um, just because I was like, I wanna be upgraded, you know? <laughs> like, and she was laughing so hard, but um, I was like, hey, I gotta ask. I gotta take, gotta, I gotta make my plea, you know? But it didn't happen that time and it sometimes doesn't, sometimes it does, so it's worth asking for. Another bonus, part of this bonus, is if you're a Marriott Rewards member and you're a United member, you have a United, you can combine these two accounts. I'll put a link down below. I'm not affiliated. I don't make any money off this part. But you can combine those two together and start earning status rewards on both. You can get uh, raised up in your Marriott Rewards you know, to the different levels and on United faster. I did this when I was flying them twice a week and I was just boom, 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 boom. I was getting free upgrades to first class. I got elevated to the highest um, Marriott level. I was getting tons of points with them. So just, I just want you to be aware of that. It's a really cool thing. If you're a Marriott person, you try, you, fly, you stay with Marriott a lot. We stay with Marriott all over the world. I've stayed in Marriott's and Bangkok and in Singapore and in Italy and Dubai. We stayed in Marriott and Dubai. Love that one. Um, they have really great properties in the United States too, of course. If you look and, you know, look at the ratings and stuff, you'll find some really good ones. And then you can earn the statuses on both sides and they both help each other. Thank you for guys for watching. I hope you have an amazing trip. If this is your first time flying United or it's your hundredth time flying United, I know these tips are solid because I have flown them countless times over the years and I know you will have an amazing trip and I hope it's an amazing adventure and I love seeing your beautiful faces and I love coming into your life and helping you out and I hope you will come back and watch more videos because we love having you here. Hit that subscribe button, become part of the Zacchaeus Nation. It's free to do so, cancel at any time, and I will catch you in the next travel video. Peace. Hey, it's all about luxury travel and style on a budget, right? That's what we're doing here.